A recent YouGov poll of British adults found that 77% don't know much, if anything, about Islam. Nevertheless, 7 out of 10 believe that Islam represses women, and more than half associate the faith with extremism. Does Islam need better PR? Well, Christiana Becker, you are the face of a poster campaign that's currently uh, ongoing in London, um, which is showing another side of, of Islam, trying to promote a more positive side of, of Islam. Um, why do you feel this is necessary? Because the perceptions of Islam and the true values are so different. There's an enormous gap. Um, before I became Muslim, I had the same perceptions as everybody else. However, when I looked beyond the headlines and, uh, you know, and the prejudices, I found um, a, a religion that makes sense, that is beautiful, that contains you know, the same ethical values as Christianity or Judaism. Did you know, for example, that Jesus is a prophet of Islam? Moses, so is Moses and Abraham. There's a whole chapter on Mary in the Quran. Prophet Muhammad was a woman's right champion, um, a social reformer, um, you know, an environmentalist. We don't know all of this. Absolutely, you're looking puzzled. We don't know this. This is just not known. I think the true values of Islam are the best hidden secret and it's time we pull the veil on it and uh, come out and show the positive values. When I tell any of these things that I've just mentioned to my producer on television, you know what he says? My God, Islam needs PR. <laughs> <laughs> Gisa Sagal, there you go, a completely different view of Islam that most of us have, as we heard in these statistics, and most of us think that actually represses women. Christiana's telling us a completely different story, which is a great argument, surely, for having a PR campaign to inform people. I think that um, religions don't need a PR campaign. So I think Islam is growing very rapidly, and of course there are many versions of Islam that people are converting to. And the problem is that the perception that it is associated with repression and so on. It's particular Muslims uh, who are associated with repressing women. We're talking about the Taliban. And, you know, there, there, there's been a lot of sleights of hand, a lot of language problems, as somebody said. Um, you know, we talk about civilian casualties. Who are most of the civilian casualties caused by? By the Taliban. We have a very complex message from our Afghan friend here. I'm, I'm not saying that is Islam. Exactly. The point is that, that I think what needs to be brought out if a PR campaign is necessary is that the, that the people who suffer from the extreme interpretations of Islam are Muslims. Those are the people in the front line of suffering. And it's, it's, it's people who are being killed by Taliban bombs, who are the civilians of Afghanistan who are suffering. So what you're saying that Christiana's kind of missing the point, or she's glossing no, I'm over, or I think, what? I think, I think that she, they're trying to do something that they feel is necessary. Unfortunately, for instance, I, I, for me, when I look at a Muslim, among my friends, my family, my, you know, people I work with, I see a mirror image. I'm not seeing some alien other. I live in a culture which, I mean, I come from India originally. That's one of the largest Muslim countries in the world. It happens to be a minority, but it's still one of the largest Muslim populations. I'm very familiar with everything that she's talking about. about but but you're not typical. But we, you I'm very typical seven. of many people, no. and I think there are two problems with this, with, this, with this campaign. One is that in appealing to Judeo-Christian traditions, they're talking about an abstract idea of Islam as opposed to the real perceptions of real problems that people know that there is rising extremism, that that's also converting people. Okay, uh, well, yeah, that Christiana and then Mehdi, I'm going to bring no, you. Okay. I'm, I'm, and it cuts out, I'm, I'm an atheist from a Hindu background. <laughs> Many Muslim traditions are absolutely rooted in India culturally and, um, and my Hindu relatives I'm worship in the same I'm entirely sure, Gita, why, why you've got a problem with this, this I'm campaign. I'm saying that it evades the question. It evades the question. Okay, it evades the question. To, okay, to evades the question. First of all, we have to realize Islam, like any other major religion, is, is not a monolithic block. Yeah, there are many good. different interpretations yes. and many different streams. Now, the violence of a few fringe extremists, which, we are, which um, act against the teachings of the Quran, oh, that is the problem, overshadow the entire media discourse. The vast majority of Muslims uh, condemn these actions, are against them, and live a completely different, beautiful version of Islam, where social e equity, so, uh, social justice, you know, all this um, being kind to the weak, the, the care for the, the, the elderly, all that is part of, of our value system. Peter, Peter think, Whittle, is, it, is this a vision of Islam that you, you recognize, and, and would you I like to be introduced to it? Listening uh, to you, it's like you're living in fairyland. Uh, 
Uh, frankly, I don't see why any religion, I'm a, an atheist, I don't see why any religion should have a PR campaign, which has actually been, I think, directly or indirectly funded by government money, by public money. It's not. It's why, entirely funded by private donations. Right, but it okay. has actually been promoted by tax-funded organizations. Why should, no. this, why should this happen? Some of the points that are made are sort of so absurd that they, they're almost are surreal. The idea that, for example, women in Islamic societies are not repressed is quite extraordinary. Now, for example, we talk about that. this country, nobody talk about this country, for example. Nobody has said that. Look, nobody, I said the values of Islam are pro-women and pro-men. What? No, no, Don't no, judge Islam says, by Muslims. You said Muhammad supported Absolutely, he did. Women's but rights. Hang on, hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Just, 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 just a second. Let the, Peter finish his point. It doesn't point. make the point. This campaign doesn't make the point about how he married a girl at the age of six and consummated at the age of nine. No, no, it doesn't make that point. But the fact I would make as well, and I, this is a very pers uh, personal point, is that uh, as a gay man, for example, uh, a big survey done by Policy Exchange a few years ago. The oh, biggest, yeah, the hang, big, on, no, hang on, hang the on, biggest, hang on, hang on, hang on. It was done by Munira Mirza, who is a, a Muslim. She's not an atheist. Right, she, is, she was from a Muslim background, and you know it. She's an atheist. And the fact, the fact is, it found that 71% of young Muslim men, uh, 17 to, uh, 16 to 24, right, thought that homosexuality should be criminal. Now, how are you going to put a PR spin on that? How do you do that? Well, Maybe. Peter, I'm delighted you're here because you're the very reason Islam needs a PR campaign because people like you talk so much drivel no, about Islam no, and Muslims. That's why, why we need a PR campaign. To get rid of our nonsense. Like that. Some Muslims want homosexuality criminalised. Guess what? Some non-Muslims do too. Go to some pubs around here. Uh, listen, Absolutely. look, yes, listen, I don't agree you with don't that judge, either. But you don't judge a people or a community or a faith on the basis of an extremist minority. That's that is why not the an majority. extremist minority. That, of course it is. That's 70%. That's, of course it's a minority. 70% of, of 16 to 24 year olds think that being gay should be criminalised. So, that so, is not a minority. So that means that Islam doesn't have any PR problems according to you? That doesn't mean that the media don't yeah, exaggerate do the fears of Islam. Should be no, no, I'm asking you. You said we live in a fairyland. No, right? no, what, what I live in a land where the PR newspapers can say whatever they like about Islam and Muslims, where tabloid newspapers go after people all the time. They go, the Daily Express has either Princess Diana or a woman in a burqa on the front page every other day. There's about 2,000 or 10,000 women out of 2 million who wear burqas, okay? There is an absolutely uh, open campaign of demonization against Muslims among sections of the right-wing press and think tanks like Policy Exchange, sorry to say. You cannot put your head in the sand and expect Muslims to say, oh no, sorry, we're going to ignore this. And actually, let me just make a wider point. Okay, last time I came on the program, I actually came on to make this point, to say the media actually treats Islam badly. What I came today to make the point was actually, we can't blame the media for everything. We can't blame people like Peter for everything. Actually, Muslims are to blame for a lot of the problems in Islam, which is why, which is why Islam needs a PR campaign, not Muslims yeah. who bring it into disrepute. Well, and that's a very important point. Well, Christiana made a very good point that was based on that, and I must just say a word for Daily Express. I know that they do cover these stories, they also cover other stories and don't get not into as trouble. Much, sorry. Thank and you very actually, much. Actually, the Cardiff uh, University School of Journalism found that's not true. They disproportionately focus okay. on Islam. Uh, Christiana, but you made a comment there that was very interesting. We should not judge Islam by yeah. Muslims.